Dips are by far, without a doubt, they're unparalleled. They are the best exercise for triceps. Well, shit, now what am I supposed to do? You might be thinking the same thing, especially if your current tricep workout looks like this. A hefty dose of tricep pushdowns. If you've been watching this channel for any length of time, definitely some lion tricep extensions or any other tricep exercise that's been shown to be effective that happens to work for you. Well, maybe it's time to change it up, especially if you're listening to Mike Menser, who is somebody I actually listened to a lot growing up. See, Mike Menser's heavy duty training program was something I adopted as a young teenager and it gave me great results because it told me how to trade in workout length for intensity. That being said, he didn't just stop at triceps. Mike was a huge believer in the value of the dip for building your entire upper body, your chest, your shoulders, and your triceps. But is there merit in what Mike is saying for you? Should you be prioritizing the dip in your triceps training? Well, I actually have a personal story that I wanna share with you that certainly made me a believer, but before I get to that, I wanna share with you what Mike's original inspiration was that convinced him that this is such a powerful triceps builder, not to mention for your entire upper body overall. There were three American gymnasts who worked the parallel bars that possessed pecs, shoulders, and arms like those of an advanced bodybuilder, literally. Not just, you know, kind of beginning bodybuilders, but advanced bodybuilders. One of my recent phone clients happens to be deeply involved in the world of gymnastics, and he knows those three gymnasts. He told me that people ask them all the time if they lift weights, and they don't. They develop those big upper bodies doing dips. And so there you have it. But of course, we're not all Olympic gymnasts. I know I certainly am not. But I mentioned to you that story that I wanted to tell you because that is what actually convinced me about the value of the exercise. You see, in 2008, I tried to throw a baseball for the New York Mets and quickly realized I'm not a baseball player either. And what I had to show for it was this MRI report that I had done years later that encapsulated just how much damage I did to my shoulder by trying to throw that baseball. I had a 50% tear in my rotator cuff, a complete tear of my labrum, and degeneration in my shoulder that pretty much aged me out to be about 80 years old. Not a good combination when you're trying to make some gains. Well, that being said, a lot of the pressing exercises were off the table for me, or at least a lot more difficult. Bench pressing caused me pain. Overhead shoulder presses caused me pain. But the one exercise I was able to maintain that didn't cause me as much pain, ironically, was the dip. And I figured maybe I'll have a lot less exercises in my arsenal but if I could just have one that did a really good job of hitting the chest, shoulders, and triceps, then I'd be in a good spot. Like Mike Menser said, it's the upper body squat. Think of the dips as the upper body squat. Dips are by far, without a doubt, they're unparalleled. They are the best exercise for pecs, delts, and triceps. But like others have said, it could be a pretty not so great exercise, especially if you do have shoulder issues, unless you know how to do it right. And that's where I applied my knowledge as a physical therapist. So I did the exercise, but I made sure to do one very important thing. Keep my shoulders pulled down. In other words, unshrug my traps throughout the entire exercise. Because what tends to happen when you don't do that is as you lower yourself down, you will roll your shoulders forward or almost throw the humerus into the front anterior capsule, which could cause additional shoulder irritation. By doing what I'm talking about here though, that is avoided, making it a much safer exercise. Now in regards to triceps though, I also know something about body position. The more forward I lean during the exercise, the more I'm essentially turning this into a suspended push-up. I don't want that if it's the tricep development that I'm trying to target here. So what I do is the opposite. Instead of leaning forward so much, I stay more upright. And by staying upright, more of the focus is on flexion and extension of the elbow, which will place more of that load on the triceps. Another little tip I found helpful is making sure I get to full extension at the elbow. And one of the things that we know assists in that is by getting full extension through the wrist too. So I did that by not focusing on gripping through the hands because that almost promotes a little bit of wrist flexion. I almost want to feel like I'm getting extended through the wrist. So I almost use a false grip and push myself through the palm of my hand into that slight extension at the wrist that actually promotes that good full extension at the elbow. Again, really good contraction on the triceps. Now, as Mike would require, it's not about even the exercise if you can't apply the intensity to the exercise. Again, trading in all that volume for the intensity. So what did I do here? Well, I just set up a nice, easy drop set. And I understand that that's not the superset, pre-exhaust set that Mike used to do, but it still is incredibly effective. So what I would do is a regular dip, and I could do it either with weight or if you can't handle the additional weight, you just do it in body weight, but you do a good six to 10 repetitions to failure. And at that point, as soon as you reach failure, you're not done. 
you can hang a band over the dip station and at that point simply perform assisted dips to allow yourself to not just go to that failure mark, but through failure where Mike would want you. And at that point, you rep out once again. But you still have one other step that would make Mike really proud, and that is some negative only repetitions. And on a dip station, you've got no excuse then to be able to perform them because you simply just step yourself up to the top and then apply the resistance on only the negative portion of the exercise. And when you get down to the bottom, you step yourself right back up again and perform another negative only dip until you can't really control the speed of the descent on the negative, at which point you know you pretty much toast and you've done exactly what Mike wanted. But now, of course, dealing with a limited exercise array, I wanted to do more. And I would often find myself asking the question, is one more set really bad if I did one? On occasion, I've had a phone client ask, Mike, would it make a difference? Would it be the mistake to do a second set? You keep making such a big deal about doing one set. And I respond something to the effect that doing a second set is neither necessary nor desirable. In fact, it would be the biggest mistake you can make. Going from one set to two sets is literally the biggest mistake you can make because going from one to two audience is not merely a linear increase of one unit, one to two. It represents a doubling, a 100% increase in the volume of the exercise. And remember, that's a negative. Even one set represents a negative because insofar that you train it all, you make an inroad. Well, some people might say, well, Mike, if I do a second set, maybe I'll, I'll get a little bit more growth stimulation. But then I point out, whatever little bit extra growth stimulation, you made a doubly deeper recovery ability, so that negates any greater growth stimulation. Well, shit, Mike. You just had to go and ruin everything now, didn't you? Just one set. But I will say this, guys. Though I might be a good listener, I don't always listen to what's being said. I can hear you. I'm just a little bit stubborn. So I didn't want to leave out some other things I did enjoy doing for triceps, namely my lion tricep extension. But remember, I had a pretty serious condition in my shoulder, and I still do. It's banged up. There's not many rotations left on this tire. I have to protect them. So just going on a cross-country trip and piling up mile after mile after mile, essentially just doing more and more exercises and unnecessary sets in the gym, isn't going to be the best long-term approach for me. But what I'm begging you to do is reevaluate that question for yourself. Bad shoulder or not, should you be doing as many sets as you're doing right now? Could you benefit from doing less of what you're doing right now and by trading in some of that extra volume for more intensity? And I'm saying, yes, you probably can. But with this shoulder and my situation, I had to kind of cut down on what I was going to do. So I did do more, but I still did that high intensity. And so what I opted to do was my lion tricep extension. If you guys saw my triceps ranked exercises video, I actually put it at the very top of the list. I think it's a great exercise for stimulating the long head of the tricep and putting it on that stretch. But I still made some tweaks here too to get that really effective to and through failure benefit that Mike preached. So I would do a lion tricep extension with a heavier weight. That would take me to about six to 10 repetitions. And again, these are not easy repetitions. This weight is very challenging. But as soon as I reached failure on the exercise, I didn't just put the weight down. Instead, I just changed the mechanical effect of the weight in my hands by shortening the moment arm and bringing my elbows down in front of me and performing more of a JM press or a modified French press here. And again, I know that this is not Mike's approach here. He would take two exercises with a pre-exhaust exercise first leading into a more compound exercise. I'm using the same exercise and mechanically changing the effect, but the end goal is the same. We want to exhaust a muscle and take it further through exhaustion. So I do exactly what I just did here. I take it all the way through exhaustion on that JM press, but I'm still not done. Because what I can do is just rep out one final time with one more mechanical drop set into a close grip bench press, or at least modify because I'm using an easy bar here. By this point, my triceps are fried, and yes, I'm getting a good hefty dose of extra help from my shoulders and my chest. Remember, these muscles prefer to work together, so why not allow them to? That was one of Mike's main principles. Do the compound exercise after you're already fatigued so you get that extra help that can help you to push through to these new levels of effort to reach new growth. So then was that it? Was I done at that point? Well. Yes, but it didn't mean that that led to my results because it's not just what you do in the gym that creates the muscle growth. As a matter of fact, it's what you also do outside the gym. Remember I said that Mike would blow your mind three times in this video? I think this is where it's going to happen because that contribution of what you do outside the gym is about ready to get a lot more important. Most bodybuilders today do not understand that the big picture is comprised essentially 
of two elements of equal value. I emphasize the word equal. By equal value, I mean literally 50-50, not 60-40, not 70-30, but 50-50. The first element, the first 50% of the big picture, obviously, yes, of course, is the actual workout. Who would deny that? But just as important, the other 50%, not one iota less important than the actual workout is the rest period between us. And here's why. The workout, you must understand, does not actually produce. The word is produce. The workout does not produce muscular growth. Remember, the workout is merely what? A stimulus. It stimulates what? The body's growth mechanism into motion. It is the body itself that produces the growth, but only if you leave the body undisturbed by further exercise during a sufficient rest period. Or you could say it simply, in other words, if you don't rest enough, you don't grow enough, if at all. Well, damn it, Mike, you just went and did it again. You just upped the recovery ante a lot, especially for me. You see, I was a guy who used to love to live on five hours of sleep a night, but I knew as my shoulder was becoming more of an issue, I was going to need to rest more because recovery is so important. Hearing it from him and hearing him say it that definitively should be convincing to you. And again, this is a guy who trained both on steroids and off of steroids. He understood what real recovery looked like and should look like. And if you don't have proper nutrition, if you don't have proper sleep patterns, if you don't have proper supplementation to support your efforts in the gym, you're not going to recover fast enough to make the gains that you're looking to make. But it does require you again to reevaluate what you're actually doing. And are you maybe doing a little bit too much of that direct work? Though I was training my triceps with a lot less volume, I still was applying high intensity. And I knew that when I came back and trained chest or when I came back and trained shoulders, I would be hitting those triceps inadvertently once again. So what did I do? I tried to even consider dropping the volume down on my direct tricep work a little bit in terms of spacing out the frequency of the workouts. So maybe I used to do them once every six or seven days. Well, it might become more like once every nine or 10 days. And what happened? I didn't see any change in the size of my triceps, at least in terms of getting smaller. If anything, they actually got a little bit bigger. And how was I able to achieve that? Because I did prioritize just as much what I was doing outside the gym. And I implore you to start at least giving yourself a better shot at doing the same. Now, I was lucky when it came to nutrition because I've always been locked in there. I know how to eat well. I know how to eat to help my body recover. And when it comes to supplementation, I know that as well. For me, Athen RX Pro 30G is a premium protein powder that helps me to make sure I get the amount of protein that I need every single day to maximize muscle recovery in between my hard training workouts. It happens to not only be one of the highest quality proteins on the market, but it comes at a very cost effective price when compared to other protein supplements. You can find it over at athenrx.com. In the meantime, I hope you found the video helpful. If you're looking for other videos about Mike Menser and his influences on me and my training that could apply to you as well, then by all means, let me know in the comments below and I'll do my best to do that for you. If you haven't done so, make sure you click subscribe and turn on notifications so you never miss a video when we put one out. If you haven't seen my video on biceps and how Mike Menser inspired me there, you're gonna wanna make sure you check out this video also. It's a good one. All right, guys, see you soon.